Hello and welcome back to Medication Nation. As always, my name is Tamara's Medic. I'm a fourth year medic at Imperial College London. And boy, do I have another banger of a video for you guys. Today, we're going to be talking to you guys about the BMAT section three, which I personally feel is one of the hardest sections to revise for and do well in because unlike section one and section two, there's no clear mark scheme, there's no right or wrong answer necessarily. And also it's a skill set that we're generally not used to doing on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of essay writing. So I'm gonna be talking you through the steps that I did in order to gain top marks in this section. And also I'll be doing a little giveaway at the end of the video where each and every one of you who wants to have a copy of my actual BMAT essay can do so, which I highly recommend has been very, very good for revision purposes. More details of that at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned to that. As always, timestamps on screen now and in the description. Cue that intro and let's go. So in terms of the format and scoring of this section, you are given 30 minutes to write a short essay, which is a maximum of one side of A4 in length. Therefore, things like timing, technique and planning are extremely crucial. You are usually given three titles, which is either a statement or a quote. One of them tends to be healthcare related, the other about science more broadly, and the other not really about science or medicine at all, more a general statement about things like either human nature, wider society, or politics, for instance. So you get an option of three, you choose one, and you write your essay. So in terms of the scoring of this section, your essay will be marked by two examiners and the score that you would take home at the end of the day is gonna be the average between what both examiners have given you to try and combat subjectivity and give some element of fairness. Now, just to give you some stats in terms of what most candidates get in the last year's cycle, combining both the August and October BMATs, less than 5% got more than a 4A. The majority of candidates get a three in terms of the content and over 70% of candidates get an A for their spelling, punctuation and grammar. So what are my top tips in terms of doing well in section three of the BMAT? The very first tip that I'm going to say to you guys is number one, make sure that you plan your essays. This is a major key. Examiners can quickly tell between those that do plan their essays and those that don't. Those that do tend to have a clear logical ordering of points. Their arguments are well presented in a concise and clear manner. Those that don't plan their essays, their essays tend to lack clarity. They tend to have a random ordering of points and also there tends to be arrows or stars all over the place and it does tend to look really, really messy. Examiners can quickly tell the difference and those that do plan their essays, they definitely get the higher marks. So how can you plan your essays? A simple pros and cons column, arguments for, arguments against, and maybe some examples there to back you up. So the second major tip after planning your essays is going to be get others to review your work. Not only are you gonna have a better and better and better <laughs> no, idea no, no, of what no. scores <laughs> you are obtaining, but also they are going to be a great source of information in terms of how you can improve your essay writing style and arguments. So another top tip is make sure that you do some sort of wider reading around current topical ethical issues, as that's really gonna stand you in good stead in terms of making strong arguments, as not only are you going to gain marks for your writing style, i.e. your ability to clearly and concisely present arguments, but also you are going to gain marks for your actual content of the arguments. And those are gonna be significantly strengthened by having this wealth of information by doing wider reading. I myself read around topics using BBC News, uh, but also the New Scientist, something that really, really helped myself. Another thing that I did that not many people did, um, which is a bit over the top to be honest, but nevertheless I did it, so I'll be telling you guys. I actually memorized a few Hippocrates quotes because I felt these quotes can be generally applied to most ethical scenarios and also it really, really looks good if you can just put in a quote uh, to either back up a point that you are making and strengthen your argument. And finally, try and predict possible essay questions. So how can you score highly in this section? What are candidates doing that are getting above a three that those that are getting a three aren't doing? 
Well, the first thing I need to make sure that you guys do is make sure that you are reading the question, review the question, and then re-review the question to make sure that you're answering the question, but also ensuring that you are answering all parts of the question. Also, make sure you are backing up your points with examples. The classical structure of point, evidence, and explanation here, it will get you the top marks. Also, you want to make sure that you are generally writing with good spelling, punctuation, and grammar. So now that these general points are sort of mentioned, I want to get into specific details about what the mark scheme actually says that candidates must do in order to achieve A5. The mark scheme clearly states that candidates need to provide and generate a reasonable counter proposition or argument in order to score 3 out of 5 i.e. failing to provide at least one counter argument will restrict your ability to score three or more in this BMAT section. So make sure that you are mentoring counter arguments. Also, you need to reach a conclusion. It says the good BMAT essay will consider arguments for and against the title statement, a great essay in the words of the marking criteria for a score of five lead to a compelling synthesis or conclusion. So, how can you reach a compelling synthesis or conclusion? Consider maybe reaching a resolution between the two arguments, both for and against, in your conclusion. That is one route that you can maybe go down, but you need to make sure that you are making a conclusion, but also that you are making a powerful, impactful, compelling conclusion for that score of five. Okay, so what are some things that I did specifically in terms of my timings and my structure? Timing-wise, I spent two minutes trying to select the essay that I would write. I spent five minutes planning that essay, 20 minutes actually writing the essay, and then another three minutes I allocated for proofreading. However, low-key, honest with you guys, the proofreading never really happened. Um, the idea, and those are my timings down to an exact science. Now, in terms of the structure that I used, I used the introduction to explain what the statement is arguing. My first paragraph was then points for, my second paragraph was points against, and finally I reached a compelling conclusion where I reached an overall viewpoint and I backed it up, not by repeating points I made previously as I felt that was a waste of space and it really detracts from the overall strength of your conclusion. Thank you very much for tuning in to another banger of a video and as promised for those of you that watched to the end of this video i'm going to be doing a giveaway so details of that all you have to do in order to get a copy of my bmat essay which remember got a very very high score all you have to do for that is make sure that you are subscribed to the youtube channel make sure that you follow me on instagram at christian goyle 88 and comment down below when you are done and I'll make sure I get my BMAT essay to you, all for free. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope this was useful. Make sure you like, subscribe. Tomorrow's Medic over and out. Cheers.